We're in lesson two of chapter nine, which we're going to graph y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. First, we're going to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Then we're going to graph y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Then we'll find the minimum value of a function. So if we're looking at the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, it's a parabola that opens up if a is greater than zero, like this and opens down if a is less than zero, like that. And we learned this last time, but it's narrower than the graph y equals x squared, or the parent graph, if the absolute value of a is greater than one. So a narrower graph would look like that. And it's a wider graph than the parent graph if a is less than one. So if it was like one half, it would open up wider. A couple things that are gonna be our focus this time. Just like linear equations, there is a y-intercept for parabolas. The y-intercept is this c. So the point zero for x and c for y is somewhere on the parabola. The axis of symmetry and the vertex that we talked about last time, remember the axis of symmetry is the line that divides the parabola in two. The vertex is at the lowest point or the highest point of a parabola. That is located at x equals negative b over two a we could find the x value of the vertex by using this formula. So let's do that here. It tells us to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex of the graph of the following functions. We have y equals negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 7. And we have the formula that we can use up here. So the axis of symmetry and the vertex are both located at x equals negative b over 2a. So we have x equals negative b, so negative b is negative 12, because it's positive 12. And that's over 2 times a, so 2 times, which would be negative 2. So that would be negative 12 over negative 4. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. So the axis of symmetry here is located at positive 3. So if I was going to draw my axis of symmetry, let's say this was positive 3 for x, this would be my line that divides the parabola in half. If I'm looking at the vertex then, I only know the x value for the vertex, meaning I still need to find that y value. Well, since the value of x is 3 for the vertex, I could find that by plugging in the 3 here. So it would be negative 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 minus 7. Well, 3 squared is 9, so negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. 12 times x is 36, so plus 36, and then minus 7. So negative 18 plus 36 is 18. 18 minus 7 equals 11. So my y value is 11. So my x value is 3, my y value is 11. So we'll say v for vertex would be at positive 3 for x. 11 for y. This is my axis of symmetry, this is my vertex. Now I have x squared minus 2x minus 3. So using that same formula we have x equaling negative b which is negative 2. So negative negative 2 would be positive 2 over 2 times a, 2 times positive 1. So we'd have 2 over 2 which would just be 1. So our axis of symmetry equals 1. If we're going to plug that in then, we would have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. Well, 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times 1 is 2 minus 3. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 3 would be negative 4. So when x is 1, y equals negative 4. So our vertex v equals 1 and negative 4. So this would be our axis of symmetry location. This would be our vertex. Now we actually could put this on a graph. So there are a few steps to doing this, and once you do this a couple times, it'll make sense and you'll get the hang of it. First, we need to determine whether it is an up or down parabola. If you remember our first slide, if A is positive, then it's going to be an up parabola. If A is negative, it's a down parabola. So since our A is positive, this is going to be facing up. Now we need to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. The formula for that was negative b over 2a for x. 
So therefore, x is going to equal negative negative 6, so positive 6 over 2 times 3. So it would be 6 over 6, which equals 1. So that's where our axis of symmetry is. So the axis of symmetry is 1. The vertex would be finding the y and the x here, so the x is 1. So 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, minus 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2. 3 minus 6 is negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1. So my vertex would be 1 and negative 1. So now that we know our vertex, let's plot that. We have 1 and negative 1 for our vertex, and this is also our axis of symmetry. Now it tells us to plot two points with x values less than the vertex. Well, the x value of the vertex is 1, so two values less than that would be 0 and negative 1. So let's erase this work here and plot out 0 and negative 1. Well, if x was 0, 0 squared is 0, times 3 is 0, minus 6 times 0 is 0, plus 2. So when x is 0, y is positive 2. And now let's do negative 1. So let's erase our work. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, times 3 is 3, minus 6 times negative 1, so negative 6. This would be 3 plus 6 here, then plus 2. 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So negative 1 is going to give us positive 11. So that's what we just did here. We plotted those two points. And now we can reflect them across the opposite side of the axis of symmetry. So just a reminder here, our axis of symmetry is located here. So we've got to reflect it on the opposite side of this 1, because this is the axis of symmetry. So if I'm going to reflect this, this is 1 to the left of the axis of symmetry, so I plot this 1 to the right. This is 2 to the left of the axis of symmetry, so now it's going to be plotted 2 to the right. So here, then, is the makings of our parabola. And then we extend it beyond the points. So now that is graphed. As you notice, it's a pretty narrow graph because the 3 is being multiplied times the x squared. And you also notice that our y-intercept is located at 2, just as it should be. Now let's find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Since the suspension cables between two towers of the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan form a parabola that can be modeled by the graph y equals 0.000097x squared minus 0.37x plus 549, where x and y are measured in feet. What is the height of the cable above the water at its lowest point? So I know the lowest point is the vertex. So I need to find the x value of the vertex using that formula, and then use the x value to find the y. So the formula for that is x equals negative b over 2a. So since b is negative 0 0.37, negative b would be positive 0 0.37. And then I'd have 2 times a, which is 0 0.000097, so four zeros after the decimal. When I multiply that times 2, I now have 0 0.37 over 0 0.000194. If I do that division, that gives me an answer of 1,907.216. Let's say 2, 2. So that's my x value of my vertex. So that's located right around here with that vertex. So what's the y value then? Well, I'd have to plug that x value in here for this x squared and this x to find the y value. So this number squared is a very large number. It's over 3.5 million if you did that on your calculator. Then we need to multiply that times 0 0.000097. And that would give us an answer of 352.836. We'll just do 836. Then we need to subtract 0 0.37 times x, so let's do that multiplication. That gives us 705.67, if we round it to the nearest hundredth. Then we add 549. So if we subtract 705.67 from 352.836, that gives us negative 352.834. Then we can add 549. That gives us an answer of 
0.166. And since y was the height, this is the answer that we want. 196.166 feet is the lowest point of this cable on the suspension bridge. Sometimes it's good to just to check to make sure your answer makes sense. If this is 500, does that look to be about 200 above the water? Uh, from my eye test, it looks like I would say yes. So this would be my answer. Just to recap, we plugged in these numbers with the formula to find the x value of the vertex. Plugged in this x value of the vertex into x here and solved this with my calculator to give me this value for y, which is the lowest point, which is the vertex for y.